So Uber has been rolling out some big changes to the driver experience and the app lately, and today they just made another huge announcement. So uh, they're actually getting rid of upfront pricing and flat rate surge for drivers in California. So we're gonna dig into these changes, what they mean for drivers and whether it will be going nationwide anytime soon. So uh, if you guys are just joining, thank you very much. I'm Harry with the Rideshare Guy. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe right now. Give this video a thumbs up. It helps us big time with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll probably ask you one more time before this video is over because it's gonna be a long one, but I am asking you guys to stick with me because these changes are pretty big. I think you're gonna like most of them and uh, I think it could have a big impact for drivers because it's not only a good thing, but it's actually gonna help you make more money. So let's get into it. And uh, really quickly, just some very quick background. In December, Uber announced these changes that allowed drivers to see where their passengers are going in California and see estimated earnings, right, when you get a request. So this is a feature that drivers have been asking for forever. And finally, you know, kind of surprisingly, they gave it to drivers. We've gone out, Ezra did a great video where he tested these features and, you know, there was a lot more positive than negative. So we're still sort of testing it and playing with it. But so far, the reaction from drivers has been overwhelmingly positive. So I thought that was going to be kind of it. You know, Uber released these great changes, but now they're coming out and, you know, I'm going to read, they, they released a, a blog post on their website and we are writing up a blog post on our site. So I'm going to read off of that right now and you guys can go check out the blog post that we did for details. I'll leave a, a note. Uh, a link in the show notes, but basically what they said is that there's gonna be no more upfront pricing. So what passengers pay now is gonna be coupled to what drivers get. So this is kind of how it used to be, and they're switching back to that format. They also said that no more flat rate surge, no more penny surge. So Uber is getting rid of this surge system that everybody hates. They're bringing back the multiplier where on a $20 ride, if there's a 2X surge, you now make $40, super simple. So they're going back to that surge multiplier. And the third one, which I don't know how I don't think this one is going to be as well received by drivers but I don't think it's a huge deal quest bonuses so drivers that do get quest bonuses will now um, they'll offer a lower service fee instead of a bonus so if you're in California and you don't see all of these changes at once, don't worry. Uber has said that they're actually gonna roll this out on a city by city basis since it's sort of dealing with pricing and numbers and all that. They can't uh, you know, roll it out to 10% of drivers in one city <laughs> because then people would be getting paid different things, but they're gonna start with kind of the smaller to medium cities. But within a week or two, um, you know, every single city in California should have all of these changes. Now, if you're outside of California, don't tune away, <laughs> you know, don't change the channel just yet. Uber has said that um, you know these changes could you know kind of if they go well they could roll them out nationwide and I think it makes a lot of sense because Uber doesn't want to have all these complicated pricing schemes and bonus programs and all that differ you know with one one system in California and then another uh, nationwide I think they want to figure out the one system that works best for pricing and surge and all that and apply it everywhere so I would um, you know I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually rolled out everywhere um, so uh, again if you guys you know I think we are breaking this news right now you should get an email actually from uber um pretty pretty momentarily but uh, if you do want to get notified of all breaking news you know anything uber we try to really stay on top of that so i want to just ask one more time if you guys haven't subscribed yet to the channel go ahead and do so now and give this video a thumbs up because that definitely helps with the youtube algorithm and motivates me to uh, stay on top of all the news so we can give you guys all the details so Let's get into the heart of it. So the first thing I want to talk about is drivers are going to get what passengers actually pay again. <laughs> so if you've been in the game for a while, you might remember this is actually how the system used to work back in the day before upfront pricing. And, you know, drivers are not big fans of upfront pricing, right? Because, um, you know, Uber, there could be these fares where Uber takes a huge cut, right? That's because of upfront pricing. You know, they charge a passenger a hundred bucks, you get 50 bucks. That's upfront pricing's fault. So that isn't going to happen anymore because what passengers now pay is going to be tied to what you as a driver get. Now, this gets a little bit in the weeds but I want you guys to pay attention right so um, you know now when you get a request in California um, to start it's gonna say your earnings are gonna be let's say 13 to 15 dollars after a 25% service fee so uber is essentially gonna tell you what you're gonna make as a driver um, 
you know, net of everything, net of all the fees and all that, right? So it's, I, I think in that respect, it's very transparent. Um, and for pool trips, you'll actually see the exact amount you're gonna earn for every completed pickup. So if there's an additional pickup fee or if there's surge or whatever it is, it's gonna tell you what you're earning after the service fee. So I think in that respect, it is very transparent and I think it's a good thing for drivers, but let's dig into, you know, sort of this service fee and this booking fee, because it does get a little confusing, right? I mean, over the years, the booking fee has kind of gone through a few different iterations, but what Uber calls the booking fee, you know, so I look this up, they they, they say that it's, um, it's a fee charged directly to passengers for the convenience of using Uber to connect passengers and drivers, total corporate speak. But back in the day, these booking fees started Started out as a dollar. I think when I first started, they were a dollar or 99 cents. Um, but in cities like San Francisco, for example, now it's now up to $2.80. So they've obviously gone up over time. And the reason why this is so important is because Uber gets 100% of the booking fee and the rest of the fare is now going to be split with the driver 25 and 75 percent with the driver obviously getting 75 percent. So really quickly, the old system under upfront pricing, right? Uber would take a fixed booking fee. So let's say the passenger, um, you know, they would take that $2.80 from the passenger, but they would take a variable service fee. So on a $12.80 uh, fare that the passenger pays, Uber would take a $2.80 booking fee right off the top. And then of that $10, sometimes you would get 50%, sometimes you get 70%, sometimes you get 80%, right? That service fee was variable. But now with the new system, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference my notes here so I don't screw up the math, but the passenger is going to pay $12.80 for a ride, right? And in this example fare, Uber is still going to get that $2.80 booking fee. And that leaves $10 for the driver and Uber to split. And it's very simple. Uber Uber now takes 25% and so that's $2.50 and you get 75% or $7.50. So the effective or kind of total commission is still kind of high. It's still $2.80, but it's $2.50 is $5.30, right? Or about 41 percent of the total fare right so like 530 divided by 1280 so in that respect it's kind of high but according to uber they say that that booking fee is now going to be variable so it may not be two dollars and 80 cents on shorter trips it may be lower now this is uber saying it right so take it with a grain of salt we'll see how this plays out in real life but they have indicated that that variability will only be by like a dollar or two. So maybe on some fares, it's like a couple bucks, or maybe it goes down even a little bit below that. And maybe it's a little bit higher, but it shouldn't be a big portion of the fare. And this is, you know, kind of according to Uber, they just announced this, they just launched this. So we don't know for sure, but we'll see. Uh, what happens, but I, I, I'm going to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt here because they're making all these positive changes. It would just seem stupid to kind of shoot themselves in the foot, but we'll see, you know, maybe I'll take a, a healthy skepticism. So uh, hopefully we haven't lost you yet, but I mean, really what you need to know is the booking fee might be slightly variable and that service fee is going to be fixed, right? That's, and that's really the more important number. So 25% or I guess if you're a grandfathered in, you signed up like four five, six years ago, like me, you'll be at 20%. Sweet. But Uber XL, Comfort, SUV, and Lux trips are gonna be at that 28% service fee. So they've always had a higher service fee than Uber X. So that's, you know, kind of a bummer, but that it is what it is. You know, some drivers, you know, so like I said, Uber X will be at 25%, those other services will be higher, but not there is going to be a way to actually reduce that 25%. And that has to do with Uber Quest, right? So not every city has Uber Quest, but Quest is a trip based bonus system, right? With basically the more trips you do, the better bonus you get, right? So right now in a lot of cities that do have Quest, Uber allows you to pick your Quest. So I'm looking at an example right here. Um, a driver was offered $40 for completing 70 trips or $85 for completing 90 trips. Pretty straightforward. You want to get a bunch of short rides on Quest, um, you know, a bunch of Uber pool trips because they count towards your Quest bonus so you can get that bonus faster. Pretty simple. I think most people are familiar with Quest, but now instead of aiming for that bonus for how much you drive, you're actually going to be aiming for a reduction in service fees. So Uber is no longer going to pay a bonus for Quest. They're actually going to reduce their service fee. So, um, you know, kind of example is, let's say in the past, uh, you know, zero to 60 trips might have been, uh, you know, a bonus request. So now what they're doing is they're saying on your zero to 60 trips, the service fee is gonna be 25%. But on every trip you do over 60, 
now it's only 10%, right? So what that means is you don't wanna do, you don't wanna pick that quest if you're only gonna do 60 trips. If you're gonna do 90 or 100 trips, you would wanna pick that quest because then 61 to 90 or 61 to 100 will be at that reduced service fee. So this is actually, if you if you go way back, this is actually how Lyft used to work back in the day. Um, I don't even remember, what did they call it? The power driver bonus, I think is what they called it. Or it was, it was my first year of driving. This is actually the system they use. So it's kind of interesting to see it go full circle. but. You know, it is a little confusing. And, you know, if we kind of refer back to that example above, I mean, it's simple in that, you know, if it's $12.80, Uber takes that $2.80 booking fee. And normally you would keep $7.50. But now on those trips 61 and above, you'll basically get $9 for that trip. So instead of $7.50, you make $9. So it's like a $1.50, $1.50 bonus, which is kind of in line with what the Quest bonuses have been in the past. So if you're confused right now, don't worry, you're not alone. This part is is pretty confusing I will admit um, and I think there's gonna be a learning curve for this quest part but once you get used to it I do think it'll be easier for you to understand I don't know that it's necessarily better for drivers this way I don't quite understand why uber uh, is making this change I mean I kind of do but maybe that's a whole separate topic um, you know the nice thing though is that on that 61st trip you're gonna see on the accept screen 10% service fee so you're gonna figure it out you're probably gonna be pissed at the start I'm probably gonna be pissed at the start we're all gonna be a little pissed at this change I have a feeling but I do think over time we'll get used to it we'll suck it up we'll figure it out so you might also be wondering though how is this new quest system better for me as a driver will I earn more will I earn less and according to uber the answer is it's gonna be you're gonna earn the same so they told me that they're actually gonna have the same budget for quest promotions as before and they like reiterated multiple times that this is not a reduction in pay so how much you earn on quest should not change just kind of the structure of what it looks like will but I mean honestly quest has never really been that transparent of a program there's a lot of issues with it and you know when it comes to transparency so I mean you can kind of choose to believe uber or not I'm not gonna argue about that but I do know for a fact there's gonna be some drivers who feel like they make less there's gonna be some who probably feel like they make more I think there is gonna be a lot of confusion and you know I don't think Uber's gonna do this but I really hope that they would kind of put their money where their mouth is right if they're saying they're gonna pay out the same amount for quest before and after they should really find a way to say hey here's what you made last week with quest and here's what you made this week with the new system and you can see exactly that it's the same and if it isn't pay drivers the difference, right? I don't think they're gonna do that, but that would be my suggestion to them if they're listening, which they probably aren't. So, um the other, there are a couple other small changes that you guys can read about in the blog post. The, the last big one that I wanna to touch on, and see, I told you this video is gonna be long, but it's all good information, and I'm talking fast because I'm trying to get through it as quick as possible. So, surge multiplier is coming back. All right, no more flat, flat rate surge, no more penny surge for drivers in California. I'm gonna keep throwing in that caveat. Um, you know, and I, it's kind of ironic too, because one of our writers actually discovered this. Sergio actually uh, found out that Uber was testing a surge multiplier, and we weren't sure, um, I think we even titled the article is Uber bringing surge multiplier back. Turns out that it was true. So nice work, Detective Sergio. Um, but basically, you know, all you, you know, it's kind of straightforward here. Is I think this is a good thing for drivers because now instead of getting that flat rate surge, which you know has its benefits, but I think at the end of the day, it just really decoupled. Again, it decoupled what passengers were paying. Right, if they're paying two hundred dollars for a really expensive surge ride and you only get a hundred bucks and a ten dollar flat rate surge, that's kind of bullshit, right? That doesn't feel good. And I think that sounds like Uber has finally recognize that I don't know why it took them so long or why they even did it in the first place but they finally recognize that and they're getting rid of that system so those are all the changes quickly I'll share my take I mean I think there's a lot of good news here for drivers I mean just the fact that they're finally getting rid of upfront pricing getting rid of the surge multiplier and kind of this recoupling of what the passenger pays and what the driver gets I think is a really good thing because you know when uber can charge passengers one thing and pay drivers another and they have no you know no basis in reality and they're not tied together it just creates a lot of opportunity for you know kind of like shady stuff to happen or for you to assume the worst of uber whether they're actually Actually doing it or not I think the changes to the uber quests are a lot less convincing to me that that's a good thing for drivers I don't know that it's gonna end up being a bad thing for drivers I think it's just gonna be different it's gonna be change and anytime you mess with someone's pay and things stay the same you kind of have to ask yourself well why are you messing with this if it's gonna be the same for me right it would have been nice if they found a way to uh, help drivers maybe make more with quests in the future um, if they're gonna change things but hey you know we can't have everything I'm always gonna ask for more for you guys but we can't have everything so 
Last thing I want to touch on, why is Uber doing all of this? Well, if you read their blog post, and I'll read it right now verbatim, I think it really makes it pretty clear why they're doing it. They say, last month, in response to new laws in California, we announced changes to protect and enhance your ability to work flexibly and on your own terms. Okay, as a next step, we're simplifying our fare structure. Some of these changes, especially those we've made to promotions, may take some time to get used to. Okay, so I sort of abbreviated some of that, but the first line is the most important. Last month, in response to new laws in California. What laws just passed in California? AB5. All right. Thank you, AB5. You know, I have not fully supported uh, AB5. You know, I don't think uh, I have come out and said, you know, I'm a fan of AB5. And, you know, I think that a lot of drivers are split on AB5. But one thing is clear. Uber really does not want to treat drivers like employees, and they're instituting all of these changes, you know, these beneficial changes to drivers to make uh, their relationship with drivers in California seem more like a true independent contractor relationship. And I don't think they're all the way there, but I mean, I think that these changes start to bolster their case. Um, Drivers still don't have a say over the rates that they charge passengers. Okay, so that's the big one still that's remaining. I don't know if they'll ever add that, but you can now see estimated earnings. You can see the trip destination before you accept a ride. You can also now see that pa what passengers pay is coupled to what drivers receive. And, you know, Uber is charging that variable booking fee. It's a very small amount. So I guess if you want to nitpick, you can nitpick that, but their service fee is fixed. So sort of going into every single trip, every single shift, you kind of know what you're getting, right? Now, we still need to see how all of this plays out in real life, but I do think these changes are going to benefit most drivers going forward. I mean, one of my biggest beefs with AB5 and why I couldn't like fully come out and support it was because it's not helping all drivers, right? I think it really helps a small number of drivers, full-time drivers, people, you know, that are out there grinding. It's a tough job. Totally empathize with that, but it only benefits a small number of drivers and there are a number of changes. There's a number of regulations or a number of things that drivers all care about, right? Higher pay, seeing passengers' destinations, destination, getting rid of upfront pricing, bringing back the surge multiplier, a lot of these things that Uber is adding. And, you know, the, the final thing that I want to just leave you guys with right now is in our most recent uh, Uber driver survey, 66% of drivers indicated that they wanted to be independent contractors. The big caveat, though, has always been that they want to be true independent contractors. And I think that it's just kind of ironic. I mean, could it be that Uber has finally decided to listen and treat drivers like true independent contractors? I mean, these changes, um, you know, I don't know if they take it 100% of the way there, but it's definitely getting it closer. So I want to hear what you guys have to think about all these changes. Um, what do you think about Uber getting rid of upfront price? in California, simplifying the fare structure, you know, tying what passengers pay to what drivers receive. Is that a good thing or do you prefer the old system? Feel free to agree or disagree with me. And then of course the big one uh, too is getting rid of flat rate surge for drivers in California. And if you're not in California, what do you think about these changes? Do you think that they'll be rolling out um, to other cities and states this year, next year, anytime soon, or never at all. I'd love to hear from you. And again, if you guys are just uh, checking out this channel right now, we release new videos every single Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, all days of the week. And I think today's even a Wednesday, right? When there's breaking news. So always try to stay on top of everything that's happening. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, turn off that, turn on that notification. Um, you know, I like to go live whenever there's big breaking news and also give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. All right, take care and stay safe on the road.